So I'm doing a little family harvest today and I realised I hadn't done the harvest video yet for September so better go on with it. We had a bit of a frost this morning which is very unusual for us in September. In fact it's unheard of I think in September. Um, yeah so let's get on. So I'm really pleased to have still such a good selection of tomatoes. I mean, we've stopped making, doing any preserving now because we've just got so many um, passatas and sauces and etc. all done. But uh, we've still got plenty of people, including us, who want an abundance of uh, tomatoes in their salads. So I'm really happy that we've still got plenty to pick. And you can see that even high up here in the canopy now, we've not got a huge number left. So we are actually managing to uh, harvest more than we have in any other year, I think. And so we'll not have a massive number of green tomatoes left over. And we've also got quite a lot of plants still on the go in containers because these ones that I'm harvesting right now, these will be out of the ground within the next 10 days to make room for all the winter salads and spinaches and things like that. And this one is the star of the show in the polytunnel at the moment. So this one is honeycomb and it's absolutely gorgeous. It is so sweet. And it's an improved version of Sun Gold. I got it from Dobby's. And it's an, it really is fantastic. Um, it doesn't split as much as uh, Sun Gold does. But it's just, I mean, it really is. Um, super sweet honeycomb it's called. Unfortunately I've got quite a few of these in pots so uh, hopefully we'll keep harvesting these for quite a few more weeks really. Although it frosted outside it was 0.8 in the polytunnel so fortunately we've still got a bit of life left in these. So it's not a patch on summer, but it's still a nice little harvest for this time of year. So next up, I'm harvesting the French beans. And again, these are in the polytunnel. The outside ones have pretty much finished now for us. There's a few on them, but the, the quality is not so great, whereas obviously these are still at their peak. And I only harvested them yesterday, so there's not a huge number still to take but I think at this time of the year it's it's still nice to uh, to have a few beans although you know pretty soon we'll be fed up with them and then uh, we'll just be looking forward to them again by the time we have them in the polytunnel next year in about June time really So I'm really pleased with those. That'll keep us going for a week. So now we're on to the celery, which we just harvest as a cut and come again crop. We just take a few of the outer stalks each week and uh, it just keeps on growing. We've been harvesting this plant since about May time actually, late May. Something like that, and yeah, we've got a nice little clump there, it's not too bad. So we're starting to get a nice little collection. So next up I'm just going to pick a few carrots, and this was originally intended to be my winter bed, but got a little bit of root fly in here, so I've kind of change my plans a bit and yeah I've moved I've gone for a different left a different bed in for winter so this bed 
is currently all being picked over the next month or so. They're not too bad, these carrots actually, I'm quite pleased with them so far. Close that up. So, there we go. Not a bad little bunch there. So while we're doing root veggies, I think we might as well get down here, pick a few turnips. And some radishes as well. I love these turnips. These are Tokyo Cross. They're a beautiful white turnip. And this bed is my onion bed. And, and then I plant it to field beans later on in the season. And previous years I've just left it after the onions until I put the field beans in. But this year I thought, well, I'll see. I'll just put some quick growing crops in here and see what I can get out of it. And yeah, I got this lovely crop of spinach, turnips and radish. So I'm really, uh, really, really happy with them. Yeah, I'll just show you these turnips while I image around. Little beauties, aren't they? Really happy with those. And so next up, I'm gonna do this purple sprout in broccoli. And to be honest, it's not the most incredible crop. This is a variety called Sante. And uh, I mean, it's okay, but it's not a patch on what you'll get in spring from a variety like Claret. But then again, you can't get Claret now because it's not spring. So, you know, this is good enough. Um, and it's certainly really, welcome at this time of year. It's not too bad. So it's a little bit early for sprouts, but some of the plants have got a nice selection on. We've got loads and loads of sprouts, so I think uh, we'll pick a few of those as well. I actually like collets more than sprouts, so I'm gonna start picking these. Again, it's quite early, but some of the plants are early. That's the thing with collets, you get normally you get a mix of different varieties in the same seed packet. Some come early, some come late. So next up are the brassica leaves. And we really like to take some of these cabbage leaves when they're still nice and loose. So there's some nice savoys down there. I'm gonna pick some leaves off those. And then these collet leaves, especially the ones at the top, you know, the relatively small ones. These are absolutely, I love these so much. And, uh, you know, they're only, only going to go to waste if you don't pick them. Gorgeous. So that's a bit of the haul there. So a bit of purple sprouting broccoli, a bit of um, Calabrese, side shoots, collets, sprouts, cabbages. So now I'm going to pick some sprout tops. We've got so many sprouts in here that I can afford to take some of these. And I'm actually going to just take some of the outer leaves to start off with. Uh, we absolutely love sprout leaves. Well, actually, I kind of love all the leaves that I'm picking today. But I think they're nicer than a lot of kale leaves. And I'm still leaving this sprout top on here to form. So in a few weeks' time, I'll be picking these as well. But for now, these are gorgeous. I also want a red cabbage, but whilst that one is a beauty, I'm actually going to, I've actually picked this one because there's not many of us eating this, this uh, harvest this week. So uh, time to use up the diddlers. And we've got loads of beetroot here. I've actually got lots already harvested. But I will just pick one of these just to show you. This is a particular favourite of mine, Cylindra. And it's a really great keeper. Um, yeah, 
I really like Solyndra. And we've also got smaller size specimens of that, which are kind of more appropriate to eat now. Lovely beauties. And plenty of golden beets as well. And lots of carrots. I've just picked loads of carrots, but these are really nice little ones. And these carrots, as you can see down here, they're all interplanted with leeks, but these leeks aren't quite ready yet. So these are purple sprouting and broccoli. They also have really first class leaves. So again, we'll always take a few of these to enjoy at this time of year. The plant doesn't really need everything. There's always uh, a fair amount of redundancy. So one leaf a plant every few weeks. So next good. up, there's a bit of kale. I've got some really nice black magic Tuscan kale here. And some, I don't know whether that's dwarf green, I think it is, or Bates blue, just an ordinary curly kale. So a bit short of radish. I never actually plant a bed of radish. I always just interplant it. This bed is a bed of herbastella. And fortunately, there's a few radish ready in here. Not a fantastic yield, to be fair. It's been a little bit warm, actually. I mean, it's frosted today, but it's been a bit warm over the last few days for radish. So, uh, yeah, there's some kind of strange roots here. But, yeah, there's a few. They're not too bad, are they? That's not too bad. And then the rest of this bed is turnips. I'll take one of those as well. So now we're on to the sweet corn. And this is our last succession. It's actually looking pretty good. Germination looks good, but maybe they'll be a little bit tough now. So uh, I'll take most of these, I think. So that's all coming on quite nicely. Now let's just pick, I think, some peppers. So I've only got two of my four pepper beds left. And these are chilies. These are sweet. So we don't need a huge number of uh, chili peppers this week. Just picking a few. I think that'll do us for today. So let's get on with these sweet peppers. And given the time of year and given that we had a frost, we're going to pick them like this because who knows what's going to happen over the next few weeks. And we need the beds clearing. Really nice. We have been extremely pleased with the peppers this year. I think we started picking them in July. That was not so good. We've been picking them every week since then. So I think that'll do. Looking pretty beautiful. Just top that off with a few green ones as well. So now I'm going to pick some chard. But this bed is actually going to be overwintered under cover. So I'm going to pick this bed first because this one isn't. And I'm going to pick some spinach. This is a mix of giant winter and red kitten.
So there's the chard in there, then separated with this, there's the spinach, and then on top of that is going to be the New Zealand spinach, which is our favourite summer spinach, just coming to its end now. So it's all looking pretty good now. We just picked a parsnip as well. And now, I think, we're on to the salad greens. So this is a nice bed. This is red pak choy, tatsoi, and salad rocket. So this is our transition bed. So it's the bed that helps us transition from the summer sowing to the autumn sowing. The autumn stuff's not quite ready yet, but uh, and this bed is obviously just finishing, but it's plenty good enough for now. So I'm starting off with Grenoble Red, and this is my favourite lettuce. If I was have to choose one lettuce to grow, this would be it. It's not the best lettuce, not for every season, but it's brilliant and it's particularly great in winter. But you'd have to keep on top of it to make sure you're always picking these outer leaves. I'm not doing a very tidy job of this one handy, but I'm holding the phone. You can see that is a beautiful lettuce. Next up is Navara, and this is my favourite, probably summer lettuce. I don't really like it in winter, it's a bit prone because it's sort of um, weak, you know, it's not as glossy as this, and it's a bit prone to mildew in winter and early spring. So it's by far, it's, the, it's a brilliant lettuce though in the summer and later spring and early autumn. Uh, so this is a maize and this is quite a nice summer lettuce. It's not quite crunchy. It's not very good in winter at all. Um, but uh, yeah, now's the time, the last picking really of this. It's, you can see it's got a really nice crunchy rib. Get rid of that. Really nice crunchy rib. I like this a lot. Good Simpson is the next one we're going to pick, and only one more. And then canasta, which is my favourite winter lettuce, uh, summer lettuce. But we are trying to grow it into autumn, and we've even got a few that we're going to trial over winter. It's not really called canasta, <laughs> that's just part of its name. It's the only bit that I can actually pronounce. So uh, please look in the description of the video if you want the actual details. I did do a trial of this Rouge de Hiver, <laughs> which I'm sure is not how you pronounce it, which is red of winter. And I can't say I was that impressed with it, to be honest. So I'm sticking with this. So there we go, that's the whole harvest, apart from the beetroots from store, the potatoes from store, the onions from store, the garlics from store, and the spring onions from the back garden, so I think. And obviously there's no fruits here because we picked the fruit yesterday. There's a lots of lovely apples and pears and raspberries. Goodness knows what. So I'm in the back garden now. It's not much I'm going to harvest from here. Just some, one of these really lovely radicchio, just to add some really nice colour to the salad mix. And some spring onions again for the salads. We've interplanted into this lettuce bed. This lettuce bed's pretty much finished now. You can see everything's starting to go to seed. And I do love this radicchio. There's quite a lot of wastage to it though because the quality of the outer leaves is often not very good at this time of year. But the spring onions make up for it. And so this is what we ended up with. We like to fill the table every week of the year. And some weeks we fill a lot more than the table. But you saw me harvest most of this so I won't bother dwelling on it. 
but uh, it's quite a nice harvest. So I hope you like this quick video. This is not an unusual harvest for us. We like to harvest about this amount, at least this amount, every week of the year. Um, we're not really into these massive harvests for bulk storage, uh, particularly freezing, things like that. We rather eat fresh food every day of the year. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Lotment Channel and I'll see you soon. Thank you.